Hi and welcome to WEH videos. My name is Skip and this is the beginning of a new series of videos for the complete beginner. Those who have pretty much no experience with X-Plane or flying. So I'm going to spend a lot of time going over the basics. My plan is to take you through some of the steps that a real pilot would go through on his way to a pilot certificate. Obviously there's way too much to cover so I'll skip a lot of stuff so I can keep the series short and simple. So let's start with a brief description of the control surfaces on the airplane and we'll start with the wings. On the ends of the wings here left and right we have the aileron. Now as I turn my yoke or push the joystick to the left the aileron on the left wing raises or goes up and the one on the right wing goes down. This causes less lift on the left wing and more lift on the right wing forcing this wing up and this wing down and that's how we turn. We have here closer to the fuselage the flaps and the flaps are used in Flow, slow flight as in when we're landing. In normal flight the flaps are all the way up. Back here on the tail we have the elevator. By pulling back on the yoke the elevator goes up. This forces the tail down and pitches the nose up. When I push forward on the yoke or joystick the elevator goes down pushing the tail up and pitching the nose down. And on the vertical stabilizer here we have the rudder. It works just like a rudder on a ship. When I push my left brake forward the rudder moves to the left causing the tail of the airplane to go to the right and just the opposite. When I push the right brake pedal forward it moves to the right causing the tail to move to the left. Now what's not shown here is on real airplanes we have another little elevator. It's or the trim elevator and it fits right here on the Cessna and we use the trim wheel and we're going to be talking a lot about that when we get into flying. I want to give you a visual so you'll get a better idea of how this works. We have three axes on which the airplane will rotate. We have the roll axes which is controlled by the ailerons. We have the pitch axes which the airplane rotates on and that's controlled by the elevator and we have the yaw axis which is controlled by the rudder and the airplane rotates around that axis. For those of you who want a more technical description on how the airplane works and these other things I suggest you download a copy of the pilot handbook for aeronautical knowledge you can get the file in one file or they have broken it down into chapters. You can download these PDF files and there's a wealth of information here. And I'm going to let you go there. I don't want to get into all the technical detail, details about the aeronautics of flying or anything. There's some important stuff here though that I suggest you go read. At least take a look at the aerodynamics of flight and aircraft performance this will help you quite a bit. Now we're going to have a quick overview of the instruments on the panel on the 172N. And we're going to start here on the right side with our radio select buttons. We have COM1 and COM2, NAV1 and NAV2. Here are COM radios. This is a combination of COM1 and NAV1. And this little white button here with the arrows is the flip-flop button. We have a standby frequency and then the selected frequency here. So you can set a frequency on the standby frequency and when you're ready to switch you just hit the flip-flop and that'll become the active frequency. Works the same on both NAV and COM radios. And this is just COM2. This is backup radios or a second set of radios used the same way. Below that we have the DME, the Distant Measuring Equipment, and this works in conjunction with the NAV radios. So if the VOR you are tuned to uh, has DME signal, then it will be picked up here and you can see the distance you are from that VOR. 
down below that we have the transponder and this is used for air traffic controllers when we set our transponder they can see us on their radar and when we have one two zero zero selected here that tells them that we are on visual flight rules and we can do pretty much whatever we want in visual flight rules of course we got to stay out of airspace that we don't belong in and we'll go over some of those things later too but when we're flying we will set this to 1200 because we will always be under VFR flight rules here and we'll have it set to altitude next we have our navigation selection buttons here we have heading LOC for localizer altitude and vertical speed and we'll go over these later on Below this we have the NAV1 VOR indicator. So this is tied in with the NAV1 radio. When we tune a frequency to a VOR, it will show up here on this indicator and that will give us uh, a way to find and fly to that particular VOR. And it works the same with NAV2. And we will definitely be doing some navigation with the VOR system. Next, we have the altimeter. That's pretty simple. This tells us how high we are flying. And right now, we are on the ground at Benton Field. And right now, it shows about 720. And this just happens to be the elevation of Benton Field. So that's pretty good. Next we have the vertical speed indicator and this is going to tell us how fast we are climbing or descending. Next we have the attitude indicator or what is commonly called also the artificial horizon and this is a very important instrument and we'll spend some time going over that. Then we have our heading indicator or the compass. We have our airspeed and a turn coordinator and we'll spend some time discussing the term coordinator and then we have our engine RPM over here we have a clock and a timer vacuum gauges over here oil pressure and temperature and then our fuel gauges and down here we have an amp meter and this of course is the yoke now looking down to our brake and rudder controls we have the left toe and rudder control and the right toe and brake and rudder control and it's duplicated over here on the passenger side up here on the 172N since it's a carbureted engine we have a carb heat control so it doesn't ice up we have the throttle and the mixture and we'll go over the mixture a bit and then here we it's hard to see but right here is a little wheel and this is the vertical trim wheel and this is an indication mark of where your airplane is trimmed so uh, this is nose down this is nose up so as you turn this wheel you'll work that little elevator I was telling you about on the on the tail section this will operate that and this will trim the airplane pitching the nose up or down as necessary to keep it in level flight or in a steady climb or descent. And this is the horizontal trim wheel which works on the rudder and it does the same thing. It controls the yaw a little bit. You can uh, trim the airplane to the left or the right with that. Down here we have our fuel select. So we have both left and right so we have a fuel tank on the left wing we have a fuel tank on the right wing and most of the time we're going to be on both drawing fuel from both tanks so they empty at the same time you don't want to leave it on the left and drain that tank and then switch to the right it's just going to make the airplane a little bit unbalanced but we have this option if we do have a problem with one of the tanks all right there's one thing you need to do right off the bat here and is go online and find the pilot operating handbook search for the Cessna Skyhawk 172N POH and download the PDF file uh, we're going to be looking at some of the information in here the next thing you need to do is get your airport information we're going to be flying out of Benton Field for most of these videos so we're going to go to airnav.com 
forward slash airports and we're going to type in 085 not zero but the letter 085 Oscar 85 and we're going to go to the airport and here we're going to get the information that we're going to need for these tutorials so just scroll down here see here very important here we have the airport elevation so you want to get that information and just for now we'll get the important stuff we have VOR distances we have a VOR at the Reading Muni Airport so we might want to write these frequencies down there's another VOR at Red Bluff so these numbers would be helpful but the important stuff is down here on the runways we have 15 and 33 and the important things to know here are traffic patterns runway 15 has a right traffic pattern and runway 33 has a left traffic pattern this is important to know and we'll be going over that and that's pretty much the information you need to know right now we need to know also the unicom frequency or the radio frequency for um, benton field and that's 122.8 and this would be tuned in on our comm radio and again we'll go over this stuff but this is where you're going to find the information you can highlight all this stuff and then print it out that's what I'd recommend we'll write down the important things that you need to know every time you go to fly so airnav.com forward slash airports type in your identifier or the airport name and get your airport information another place you should get familiar with another website is skyvector.com and we'll be using this for navigation and other things but you can get airport information here so we can click on airports and we can type in say Benton Field and we can see what they have for Benton Field here's a different airports but this is Benton Air Center and this is Oscar 85 they don't have much here so let's go back and try a bigger airport we have Reading Muni very close and we'll be going there and that's KRDD we'll be using this airport a lot and here we are Reading Municipal Airport and now you see we can get the airport layout diagram in PDF file that you can download we also can look at the sectional chart and see here's Reading KRDD Airport here and this is Benton Field right over here it's about five miles away or so so there's a lot of information you can get here at skyvector.com so I suggest you take a look at this website uh, here's a nice little overview of the airport so we have an aerial view of Reading Municipal Airport and this can be very helpful so go to skyvector.com and just experiment with it we will be using the sectional charts in this tutorial series so get yourself familiar with that before we get started it'll help you a little bit when we get to this part of the flight training so that's it for this little introduction on this upcoming series Next, we will take a little look at the pilot operating handbook for the Cessna 172N. So we'll know what we're supposed to do when we get in the airplane. And we'll also take a better look or a closer look at the airport information so we will know how to fly around the airport and not get in trouble. We will take our first flight in the traffic pattern at Benton Field 085 in Redding California so thank you so much for watching if you like this please click the like button if you would like to leave a comment or send me a message that would really be great and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have if I can so thanks again for watching and God bless